Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the world of home automation with me, your host, Paul Hibbert. Uh, today I've made an awesome discovery. I've discovered that the Broadlink RM Pro 2 can now be controlled with your voice. They haven't made that possible. They've made that very difficult indeed. <laughs> Over the last year, I've been hoping to get Vox Commando to control it, which is my uh, software of choice for doing voice automation. Uh, but unfortunately, Broadlink have made it too difficult and Vox Commando hasn't been able to. So recently, my good friend Cal, or Kala, I always mispronounce his name, so I do apologize, bought me an Amazon Echo Dot, and I am so thankful. That was such a nice Christmas present, such a wonderful gesture from such an awesome guy. So I thought to myself, great, surely Amazon will be able to control this thing. So the Broadlink RM Pro 2 has only ever been um, controllable via their application and a Tasker plugin called RM Tasker plugin 1.6.3, if you want to go and look that up. Um, there are probably other plugins that can control it, but that's the one that I found to be really useful um, when doing things from my Android phone. I originally got it because I wanted to be able to just click on my uh, home screen rather than using the app. Um, so I recently went into their settings at random and discovered that it's got something called Alexa Bridge with a tick box. Amazing. So tick that box and guess what? All my devices are accessible across the network to Alexa as Philips Hue lights. So Alexa has been fooled into being able to control the Broadlink RM Pro 2. Now this is awesome because the Broadlink RM Pro 2 can fire both infrared, which means it can control things like your TV or in my case my projector, and it can fire RF, which means it can control things like home easy light switches, um, and basically pretty much any RF light switches. Um, if the RF frequency is in the country that you bought the Broadlink for, then it should be able to control it. It should be as simple as that. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick demonstration now to show you how that works in my living room, and then I'm going to show you how to set it up. Okay, so welcome to the best living room in the universe. Here is my enormous projector screen. I can barely even fit it on the uh, screen there. Uh, projector up above the sofa. And then we've got, uh, behind my sofa, a microphone, which I use to control Vox Commando. Vox Commando still is uh, quite a lot better than the Amazon Echo Dot. If you've not seen Vox Commando before, check it out on my channel. Um, the guy that made it, James, is an awesome dude, very helpful. Uh, this is um, the Nest thermostat. This is the Broadlink RM Pro 2 that we're discussing today. This is she that shall not be named, because if I say her name, she's going to start interrupting me again and ruin yet another take. Uh, and these are various uh, pieces of home automation uh, devices that I've bought over the years that I'm struggling to focus on for some reason. Uh, this is a tablet, which is uh, an old, Amazon, um, old Android device, which is controlling that. Um, sorry, rubbish. It's controlling that when I talk to that, and that's what we're learning today. So we'll have a quick demonstration now. I'll switch the lights off. Alexa, switch living room devices on. Okay. Cool. So what she's done there is she switched the rear lights on using the Broadlink RM Pro 2. Uh, she switched the front lights on uh, using the built-in Philips Hue uh, plug-in for Alexa. Um, she switched my projector on, uh, again using the RM Pro 2. And she switched the main lights on, um, again using the RM Pro 2. So the RM Pro 2, RM Pro 2 should only be able to control these things using an app on your phone. Uh, but in the world of home automation, if it doesn't work, force it! <laughs> Uh, and I have forced it and I'm now going to show you how to force it too. So most people will begin their home automation journey with something like this. They will have purchased a home easy plug socket with a remote uh, and they will have plugged the home easy plug socket into the mains and the lamp into the plug socket. The uh, remote that comes with it you can just program to that plug socket by pressing the button on the plug socket and then pressing the on button on the remote and then that plug will remember that remote press switches that lamp on. Um, usually you get them in a pack of three and you'll train one button to each plug socket so that you can use one remote to control three individual sockets. And all we're doing is we're adding a Broadlink device in place of the remote. The Broadlink device is sending the same RF frequencies to that plug socket as the remote is. And we do that by programming it up 
using the Broadlink app on a tablet or a mobile phone. Uh, so on your tablet, you'll download the Broadlink app. You'll create a button to control the lamp. You will press that button and the app will say, now press the button on your remote. You press the button on your remote and the Broadlink device then learns that button means that button. So the button on the tablet means the button on the remote. And then for the rest of the app's life, whenever you click that button, it will switch that lamp on and off. I've gone a step further and added the RM Pro Tasker plugin. Now I'm not using Tasker, what I'm doing is I'm adding the plugin because I know I can then add other things this side to control those devices. So what we're doing is we're using Alexa to control the Tasker plugin, to control the Broadlink app, to control the Broadlink hardware, to control the plug socket, to control the lamp. Now that all happens in a split second, so even though that sounds like a long thing, it happens very quickly. And we do that obviously by speaking to Alexa. Now the way in which this works is the Tasker plugin is actually advertising onto the network to Alexa uh, each device in the app as a Philips Hue bulb. Uh, because Alexa can control Philips Hue bulbs, but she can't control these things. So Alexa is basically being fooled into thinking anything in the app is a Philips Hue bulb so that when you say Alexa switch X on, it will look at the app and as long as you've named it correctly in the app, then it will switch the corresponding lamp on and off. So if I have created a device in the app called Garage Light, uh, then I will be able to say Alexa, switch the Garage Light on, and it will go through this chain, switch the Garage Light on and off. So I'll now take you through how to set the app up with Broadlink, and then I'll take you through how to set up the Tasker plugin, and then you'll be able to do this yourself. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the eControl app, uh, and you'll see that mine's already pre-populated with a load of stuff here. Uh, but we're going to go to add a new remote as if we were a new user. So add a remote. Uh, you want to choose user defined and then sort in order. And this gives you a nice blank template to start um, creating buttons. The first button I'm going to create is a uh, on button. Um, so you could choose power. Uh, because we tend to have an on and an off button for Home Easy, I tend to choose plus for on and minus for off. So we're going to call this one Garage Light. On, save. Next one is going to be a minus symbol for garage light off. Garage light off. Save. And so I've got a remote now with two buttons on it. If I press the on button, it doesn't turn the garage light on because obviously it doesn't know how to do that yet. What it does instead is it asks you, do you want to learn a single button off your remote or do you want to learn a combination of buttons? So this is pretty awesome because you can actually create macros straight off the bat here. You could have one button that went and did a multitude of things. We're just going to keep it simple. So garage light on, I'm going to press the uh, on button on my remote. So learn single, it's now learning mode. Press the on button on my remote and it's it's picked up that I've pressed that button. Pressing test, switches my garage light on, I'm happy, yes. Pressing that button now, switches my garage light on. So I'm now going to um, train it to turn the garage light off in exactly the same way. Learn single, press the off button on my remote. It heard it, I'm going to press test. I can confirm that switch my garage light off, so I'm going to press yes. And now garage light on, garage light off. Brilliant, I now have an app. Uh, the um, remote is called sort in order at the moment, you'll notice at the bottom left there. That's rubbish, we don't want that. So I'm going to rename it uh, by clicking the settings and then device info. I'm going to rename it garage. So this is my remote control for the garage. I'm going to choose an icon as well. Choose something more interesting, something that's in the garage maybe. Save that. And now you'll see I've got an icon in the bottom left called garage which has got a nice picture of something that's in the garage. Uh, that's not true, of course. I'm not that wealthy. I don't have a running machine in my garage. Um, so opening up the garage remote, I can now choose on and off for the garage light. I can add more stuff if there's more stuff in the garage, of course. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share this with the RM Pro plugin. And in order to share it with the RM Pro plugin, uh, we just do it the same way as we would if, as if we were sharing these remotes across a network to another phone, which is a handy feature because it means that my missus's phone can also have all the same remotes on it as mine does just by clicking this button here. 
Um, so she would now go to the same settings on her phone and click the receive button and she would get the uh, remote. The RM Pro plugin is very clever. Um, if I go to the RM plugin now, uh, it will, if you've got this app open already, pop up with a little message saying receiving information from the e-control app. Sometimes it takes a couple of times. In fact, it's just done it just then, importing data from the app. Um, so sometimes I have to go back and share it again and again, but eventually the RM Tasker plugin pulls down all the remotes. Um, so it's now got a list of those devices and codes. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch the Alexa bridge on. I have already, of course. So enable Alexa bridge and auto start on boot. You want to tick both of those boxes. And it's worth noting at this point, of course, that if you're planning to, um, to do this permanently, you're going to want an Android device that you're, you're not planning on using as a phone, I would imagine, because you need something that's always on uh, and you're happy to wear the battery out on. So you'll probably want something that's plugged in all the time, like an old tablet or an old, old phone. Um, so I'm now going to go to uh, Alexa device list. Uh, and then add device, and then I'm going to choose a device name. This is the thing that she'll be listening for, so I'm going to call this Garage Light. So that's going to ask her, ask her to switch it on or off. And then the on command will be uh, select an existing code from the Broadlink app. And then Garage Light on. OK. And then an off command, selected code. Garage light off. And then OK that. And then OK that. And now it says if you've updated your settings, you simply need to ask her to scan for devices again. And you'll see in my list now, I've got garage light there, uh, second from top. So I'm now going to ask her to find them. So Alexa, scan for new devices. Starting discovery. This can take up to 20 seconds. So it's now if being... <laughs> Interrupting cow. So it's now uh, broadcasting across the network, and if she's searching for them, she should find them. Discovery is complete. I found 10 smart home devices. If your Philips bulbs were not discovered, please press the button on the bridge and rerun Discovery. Okay, so hopefully I can now turn the garage light on using my voice. Alexa, switch the garage light on. Okay. And it's switched on. Alexa, switch the garage light off. Okay. And there you go. So if we now go into the Alexa app and then go to the smart home section, Uh, we can now find in here the garage light at the very top there. And if we want to, we can add it to a group so that we can say things like, uh, you can see up here I've created a group called living room devices. So I can say switch living room devices on and it will switch all the devices on or off in that group. So particularly handy if you've got a lot of devices like my living room has, I want it to switch the two Philips Hue uh, living colours lights on, left and right. I wanted to switch the rear lights off, which is one of the RM Pro uh, commands. I wanted to switch the uh, main living room lights on at dim, uh, which is again something I programmed into the RM Pro too. I wanted to switch the projector on, um, and that's it. So that's how you would create groups in Alexa for a set of devices using the RM Pro plugin. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, please like and please subscribe uh, and I'll see you next time.